modesty. Not abstinence. You get what I'm saying? I would not be brought under the power of it. You know, like I can go out with some minister friends of mine and they can have a nice glass, a nice bottle of wine and, and I could be sitting there, we can have my favorite food, or the pasta or whatever, and, and they could be pouring it in and everything and, and I'm not going to judge them. Until I start seeing them be a little crazy about it. <laughs> but it's not expedient for me. Right. Yes. Right. Because I was an alcoholic almost. Well, I ain't gonna let's not let's get this <laughs> culture. Story, right? I mean, let's be honest, because I, I I can drink a six pack at the time. I was 139 pounds. I can I can drink a six pack to myself and not be drunk. Go figure it out. Ain't nothing but the devil. Tell you, ain't nothing but the devil. You know, if you, you can drink that much and not get drunk. That's a devil. And and three joints to kind of spice it up. That's just crazy. Look, my sister like, what the word? <laughs> my mama like, what? Yeah, that, that, yeah. I told you I couldn't start a day without a half a six, sixteenth cocaine put in my nose, two joints and a forty ounce wow. to get out of bed. That just put me down. Wow. Ain't nothing but the devil. That's another one. <laughs> but, 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 but we can't continue with the same behavior that we used to. Your surroundings should change. Your appetite should change. Your conscience, I told you, when you get born again, your appetite changes and your conscience gets turned over. Y'all need to write that down somewhere. When you get born again, two things happen. Your appetite changes and your conscience gets turned over. Yep. All of a sudden you say, you can hear it and get warning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, things just, which, which you used to uh, do and the things you used to say and the people you used to hang around with, you can feel your conscience telling you something. Yeah, no, 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 don't put me in that environment. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, yeah. anybody ever been in? Your conscience not telling you, you've been dancing too much at this uh, reception. <laughs> Sit your tail. <laughs> Seriously? Yes, Am I right? Yes, yes. Hey, I, I'm yes. being honest. Something you say you need to sit down. You enjoying it too much. You about to pop lock in and say, sit down. You about to break something. Sit down. Because you say you all out of breath. You slow dance because you out of breath. I gotta stop. Yeah, is it true? Yes, it is. The stuff we put ourselves, I mean, just, we play Jeopardy yes. with our life. Yes. Just to see how far we can get away with it. Uh, how, you know what I'm saying? Just to see if I still got it. You got it? <laughs> just because you heard the temptation is enough to let you know you got it. Yeah, that, that's all you need to know. The devil, you know, is still there. Right. Don't play games with it. Come on. I want to see if I can steal again. No, no. Yeah. Told you last week, huh? I ain't trying to figure out if I steal a guy that's trying to sneak around four women in one day. You crazy? I ain't even looking for it. Right. And your appetite changes yes. when you get born again. Yes. That, that is, you can tell. <clears throat> Weight watchers don't have nothing on you. Come on. Mm. <laughs> For real? <laughs> you don't want no junk. You start having quality control in your life, and that's what he's asking us to. Have quality control in your life. Touch no unclean thing. You have the ability to say, no, I'm not going to. Yeah, you're going to feel the pressure. Yeah, because you're going against the grain. And yeah, you used to do it that way. And you used to say it that way. But now you are be, you're allowing the spirit of God to build in you uh, some resolve. And so you can have some resolution in your selection processes. So you can choose what you allow to enter into your climate. Yes, Lord. Why? Because I carry the holy thing. My future is in here. And most everybody you connected 
people don't care about your future. Right. They don't care about your future. I, I just want the best thing for you. <laughs> well, okay, really? Well, I'm not gonna do that no more. Amen. Come on. Don't you love me? Wow. I do. I love me too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Bible says I gotta love myself. You know, you can't love nobody else until you love yourself first. Right. So when your self worth changes, then it's, you stop a lot of the riffraff. Yeah. The slick stuff stops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that everybody looking at me like, what the mess he talking about? I'm talking about it's a whole, it's a big check. It's not just one thing, and I'm, I'm making it big. I'm taking a big brush to open it up so no mm -hmm. How about the Spirit of God is speaking mm -hmm. to you? You already know He's speaking. Yes. So don't get mad. Get glad. I was glad when they said that. Go into the house of the Lord. Get that gladness in you. Amen. <laughs> but look at the next verse. It said, I'll receive it and be a father to you. And you should be my son and daughter, said the Lord Almighty. That's what I'm telling y'all. The reason why you feel like uh, uh, bastards, the reason why you feel like orphans, it's because you're still in agreement with some things. So the spirit of adoption that comes from our Father is not fully activated in your life because of what you're not willing to put off. So the greater your accountability to the spirit of God in your life, the greater the increase of acceptance into the family there is reason why you're not connected and you feel like you're not a part of something is because you won't do what the, what he is saying, his expectations. You haven't agreed with it. That's why he said, that's not the unclean thing. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So whatever, you, and that's a sign of maturity. Whatever you, and not to say this on the space between you and there, I said the sign of your maturity is what you can put off. If you can put off gratification, that's a sign of your maturity. All right, next. I think that's another chapter after that, right? Yeah. He said, I'll be a father to you, and you'll be a son and daughter, said the Lord Almighty. Chapter uh, 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises. What promises? That he want to walk in us. Yeah. That he'll be a father to us. Amen. That's the reason why. Because I'm carrying a family name. Having these promises. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why Peter said he's given us all things to pertain to life and godliness. Why? Because we've been made partakers of his divine nature. If we learn to draw from the roots, if we allow his principles to be engraved into our hearts, if we hide his word in our hearts, if, if we begin to cultivate uh, an atmosphere of submission to the Spirit of God and walking in realms of obedience, then all, all, as a result... <clears throat> He'll be a father to us. Having these, therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's what we need to do. You can't perfect holiness if you're still doing some of the same things. If your appetite hasn't changed, what's the other? And your conscience is not turned on. You don't need to preach it. Get up in the pulpit and tell you how bad you are. Come on. Come on. Your conscience will remind you. Yeah. And some people say the spirit, they say the spirit of truth comes to convict us, convict of sin. No, that's, he come to convict the world of sin. Why? Because they didn't believe in him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not the Holy Spirit convicting us. It's my conscience that's been awake mm -hmm. because I made a commitment and an allegiance to the lover of my soul. Yeah. So yeah. immediately, my conscience began to determine what's good and evil, what's right and wrong. <laughs> Remember I told you some time ago, it's either God or the world. Remember? And I said, you can't be on the fence because that's Satan's. <laughs> if you try to get out, I'm going to give God what God wants, or I'm going to give the devil what he wants. In between God and the world wow. is a fence called Satan. Mm -hmm. 
And when he does, what he offers you, he comes back to accuse you of. Right. That's true. Yeah. 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 Every human being, if we all were honest, every temptation, every desire we've had that he uh, parlance or par par paraded in front of us mm. hmm. as being the ultimate goal, once it's finished, then yeah. mm -hmm. all of a sudden he's picked up another face on you. Yeah. You know you should have did it. What you doing? <laughs> Y'all look like you don't know what I'm Yeah. He gives you what you want. Then he tell you, you know what? You shouldn't have did it. That's a schizophrenic if I ever know one. And that's what he does. And that's the torment. So something in that exchange has to change. Because you already know once you do it, you're going to be condemned. That's true. Come on. And if you're not, you're a river bait. So if some people's conscience is turned off, not turned on. It's turned off so they can do what they want to. That's why we have all the other negative stuff going on. You know, That's why we don't deal with issues. We're not walking honest in honesty or honestly. And so we, we come to the house of God with all these male factors, male factors these other things going on in our head. Illicit conversations and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. uh, offense and all that other stuff, man. Oh, Jesus. And it's not going to lift. You got to change. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Let me give you this with this African proverb, and I'm going to go to three, and then we're going to stop. So I got ten minutes, can I? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this African proverb says, when there is no enemy within, the enemies outside, you can't hurt you. Yeah. If there's no, when there's.